Hello, my physio, my lovely physiologists, Michelle Glass here, and we're back right where we left off looking at muscle fiber contraction. Remember, we have these kind of four big umbrella steps to help guide us through. We pretty much are glossing over big step one for now. So we need to know that the brain is generating the action potential and it's traveling down the motor neuron. But the details of that will pick up in the future. Big step number two, we focused on in our last video. So we looked at the details of that action potential jumping. So we can look at that real quick. You should have these notes already. So remember, we're seeing that the motor neuron is again generating the action potential when that signal reaches the synaptic knob. So that's the enlarged end of the motor neuron it's going to trigger the exocytosis of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is going to diffuse across that synaptic cleft, so that's the space in between these two cells. And then embedded in the motor end plate of the skeletal muscle fiber are those chemically gated sodium channels, and so we see that the acetylcholine will bind with those channels. That triggers those channels to open, and sodium floods into the muscle fiber. And that is going to change the charge of the muscle fiber. That's going to what we say depolarize the muscle fiber. Any kind of signaling and any kind of electricity is the movement of ions. So when those sodium ions move in, that's the electricity that we talk about when we're talking about nerve impulse or excitability. Okay, so the next piece for us to look at is what happens next. So We've opened up the chemically gated sodium ion channels. When we get the movement of the sodium into the muscle fiber, that's going to open what we call voltage gated sodium channels. And here, instead of writing the words voltage gated, I've abbreviated that with a VG. Voltage gated is talking about a change of charge, change of charge. So we just said like movement of ions is an electrical signal. So when those sodium ions initially move in, we said that depolarizes the cell that's starting to change the charge. As that continues, the charge is changed enough that we now have a voltage gated sodium channel that opens. So remember we said that the acetylcholine was the key to unlock the chemically gated sodium channel. Okay, so the change of charge, change of voltage is the key to unlock or open the voltage gated sodium channels. So you started out, I'm gonna go ahead and write up here initial, movement of sodium into the muscle fiber is opening the voltage gated sodium channel. And then I'm gonna go ahead and really emphasize this with red and make it really thick. So you have more sodium entering the cell. And this is going to further depolarize or um, give us our action potential. So let me go back up to our beginning slide. And we said for big step three, the action potential propagates across the sarcolemma and into the cell via T tubules. How did we get the action potential? That's from the opening of those voltage gated sodium channels. So as that sodium moves in, this is how we actually get the action potential in the skeletal muscle. And so here we're going to say the action potential is going to um, propagate, which is another way of saying traveling. We'll explain that more in chapter 12. It's going to propagate across the sarcolemma. Remember, sarcolemma is our special name for the cell membrane of the skeletal muscle cell and into the cell via the T-tubules. T-tubules, remember, is our shorthand 
for transverse tubules. So take a look at this diagram from our textbook from OpenStax. We're seeing again our neuromuscular junction. We're seeing again our neuromuscular junction. So we have that enlarged synaptic knob. That's going to be the end of our motor neuron. It's full of those vesicles of acetylcholine. We see the acetylcholine as those red dots. So what we see is the action potential travels down that synaptic knob. That's gonna trigger what we call exocytosis of the acetylcholine. The acetylcholine diffuses across that space called the synaptic cleft, and it binds to those chemically gated sodium channels that we can see embedded there in the motor end plate. That's gonna give us that initial movement of sodium into the muscle fiber. Once you get that initial movement of sodium in, you start getting enough of a signal, enough of a change of charge that you then open up the voltage gated sodium channels. And when the voltage gated sodium channels open, that's your action potential. So let me write that down. The action potential starts when the voltage gated sodium channels open. And this is probably more accurate to say activate rather than open, but because we're calling them a gate, I think for us at this level of our um, study, it makes sense to say open and close. So instead of activate, deactivate, I like to say open and close. Okay, so we have that sodium coming in through the chemically gated sodium channels first, and then that's enough movement to initiate the action potential. Action potential starts when you open up those voltage gated sodium channels. Now that the skeletal muscle fiber has an action potential, we see it traveling on the outside of the cell on the sarcolemma. So that's what we're seeing right here. And then we have this like a dip down of that cell membrane. This is remember our T tubule. And the T tubule remember is going to wrap around the myofibril. And if you remember, we had that place that we called the triad. It's not exactly pictured here. So let's just remind ourselves that we had like the terminal, cisterna, T-tubule, terminal, cisterna, sandwich kind of thing, right? Terminal cisterna, remember, is actually the enlarged part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So here in this diagram, we see this T-tubule kind of connecting into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And notice you have all those little dots inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which are labeled as calcium. And so what we see happening is when the action potential reaches down to the triad, when the action potential reaches to the triad, it's gonna trigger, it's gonna open voltage gated calcium channels. I'm gonna put in parentheses at the SR. Remember SR is your sarcoplasmic reticulum. So when the action potential reaches the triad, that's opening up voltage gated calcium channels that are part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And calcium ion is gonna flood sarcoplasm. Sarcoplasm, remember, is our special name for the cytoplasm in the muscle fiber. Okay, so early on, early on we said that the action potential is coupled to contraction through the calcium. And so now we see how the action potential is triggering the release of the calcium. What we still don't understand yet is 
okay, well, what happens with the calcium? Why is the calcium important? And that's what we're going to pick up in the next video. So stay tuned for that one. As always, take care of yourselves and each other.